We have uh, other reasons to replace the control arms other than maintenance. Obviously, if you have suspension modifications, if you lift your vehicle or you lower your vehicle. Uh, just as a show of hands, does anybody have a preference? Uh, lifted vehicles or lower vehicles? Who likes lifted? Lifted. lifted? Okay, lowered? All right. <laughs> hey, we got one. And a couple undecided? All right, that's cool. So yeah, um, another reason why you may want to replace control arms. Okay, slide please. Can anybody think of another reason why you may need to replace control arms? Car accidents. Oh man, nailed it. First one. All right, let me introduce the second part of my problem. <laughs> Take a look at that. Yeah, this is a solid piece of steel and it has been mangled. It's a good shot of the uh, nasty bushing on this side too. Everybody can see that, it's pretty warm. So, uh, if you want to see what caused this, next slide please. That is what happens when you leave your car in front of your house on the street. Daddy. What? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm dragging a Chrysler 8 and a quarter Verilock rear axle back into my smashed Jeep Commander. What does it look like I'm doing? Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I'm over here with my smashed Commander and I got some parts for it. The idea of this video is to get this smashed up XK rolling again. I want it to be a rolling driving parts car and all I needed to do to get that uh, accomplished is get myself a rear axle. The other one is smashed like a candy cane. So uh, we got ourselves an axle, a complement of Peconic Auto Wreckers out in Spionk, Long Island. Thank you so much, guys. They hooked me up. Got this for just very, very cheap. Um, I also have the parts from my other commander, Gator. We lifted Gator. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. And I saved the control arms, uh, the shocks, and of course, the springs. So here we go, guys. We are going to get this stuff in this vehicle and uh, try to get this thing rolling. All right, let's compare our axles. We got the old and we got the new. This is a Chrysler eight and a quarter. This has the regular open differential. As you can see, we got uh, a standard diff cover. Uh, we got uh, everything is basic, basic setup over here on this axle. Coming over here to the, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me just backtrack a little bit. This isn't basic, this is smashed. I almost forgot to illustrate the smashedness of this rear end. Look at that thing. I think curls way down in there at the end and we got ourselves a nice uh, bash mark right there cracked this housing bent the axle to catastrophic damage so <laughs> on to the good one this is a chrysler eight and a quarter with the verilock rear end now a dead giveaway if you can't tell right here we got this four-wheel drive sensor right here that's the electronic four-wheel drive and this diff cover is a 12 bolt that is more round that is way oval so if you have the oval it's a good chance you have a quadra drive too now everything else is about the same all the mounting brackets align up the exact same we got the same amount of rust just about the only difference is these dust covers these were smashed from the junkyard i'd love to change them over but I'm not going to bother because I don't want to have to pull everything apart. I don't want to have to pull off the backing plate for the disc brakes to fix these. Uh, another thing that you may want to swap over is the park brake setup. My commander had a good parking brake. This one, obviously, the park brake setup is all rotted off. But it doesn't matter because I cut off my park brake cables. I didn't feel like messing with this. I'm not going to need a parking brake for my application but it's something you might want to keep track of. Another good thing the junker did when they pulled this, they saved me the ABS sensors. So sometimes it could be a pain in the butt to remove. I won't have to worry about that. I'm just gonna plug and play. We got a little pigtail on this side. Same with this side. They didn't even bother messing with the plug. They just left me some pigtail. I'll take it apart myself. So this is ready to bolt up. I went ahead and I put all the bolts in their proper place. Now we just gotta drag this out to the vehicle 
and we'll put it in. All right, as so I scrubbed off a lot of that scaling rust, I then went ahead and I scrubbed it with some Simple Green and a wire brush. I blew it all off with a leaf blower, then I torched it a little bit, dry up the moisture, and hit it with some anti-rust paint just in the bad or rusty spots. I'm gonna try to preserve it because, again, this is a Chrysler eight and a quarter with the Verilock. If I need a new rear end on this Commander, I'll have one in stock. So I'm gonna roll this bad boy into place and next I'm gonna take the control arms out. All right, passenger side, lower control arms, easy doings, just a 21 millimeter, and I got an 18 millimeter socket on the back. Sometimes these babies have flag nuts, so you might not always need the 18. Give it a little boop with the hammer, comes right out. Dang, dude, that's some hit. Oh, man. Scrap metal. And here's the lower control arm bolt. And the passenger side upper is the same idea, only we're switching it up to 18 and 18. Right. Pulled the bolt out while blocking the control arm from potentially bashing me in the head. This bolt is a little bit bent, but not bad enough to not reuse, especially for my application. All right, not as badly damaged as the lower control arm. Still got a nice little kink to it, but it's uh, rusty and the bushings are shot, so it's good that these are replaced. Uh, it'd be better if I replace them with a new one. But that brings me to another point. If you're replacing your control arms and you have the 4x4 system, Quadra Drive 2, then there will be a tab here that mounts to little sensors. You also need to reattach this bracket onto your new upper control arm. I had to do some welding. And that senses your, uh, your, your motion of your control arms up and down. So you will have to either buy a control arm with that tab or just cut off your old tab and weld it to it. Uh, I welded the old tab onto my new control arms for Gator. All right, here come the new control arms, or used rather. You can see the cut marks where I cut off the old tab, and I'm gonna make sure that these metal flanges go towards the body. That's the proper installation. And uh, I'm gonna put this in exactly the way I removed the other one. tighten them down in the position of their ride height. Not that it matters really for this vehicle, but still it's good practice. And as for the lowers, we're gonna put these holes on the axle side and we're gonna put this flange towards the outside. There are the passenger side control arms, pretty straightforward. Now let's look at the driver's side. Different ball game. All right guys, check out the driver's side control arm bolts. Look at that, that's the nut. So that means the bolt must pull out this way, but there's a gas tank in the way. So to get the upper and lower, you will have to drop the gas tank. Trying to remove control arm bolts with the gas tank in the way, Kinda makes me mad. Why would you do this to me, Jeep? Why? Why? Yes, that was a little clip from me the other night doing the control arms and the other commander, the Gator. And all you do, really, it's not the worst thing in the world. You just gotta drop the gas tank bolts. And there's a few of them. There's about six. Uh, one, two, three on this side. Three on the other. I dropped these two 
and let's see I dropped this one I also dropped the back two on the other side the gas tank was dangling very very low I had the bottom supported with the jack stand so it wouldn't uh, rip any lines I was able to do it without disconnecting any evap or fuel stuff I was very careful and ultimately I was able to slide this bolt out of a little groove in the gas tank that's up there and the top bolt I pulled out all the way from the top put the control arms popped it back in raised up the gas tank put it all back together again and then what I did with this bolt was I reversed it I put the bolt going into the vehicle I took off that flag nut I ground the edges smooth so I could put a nice 18 millimeter on it like there should be and I was able to squeeze up in between the gas tank and the mount with a 21 millimeter wrench and got her done. I certainly don't need this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and slide in this track bar bolt because it lined right up. And since I got the jack over here, might as well try to get this lower control arm on the passenger side. I wonder if hanging up from the sway bar might help. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get in two jacks. All right, that's one. side control arms are gonna go right in that's pretty sweet and driver side upper All right, I got my nut on. And since she's already jacked up at the ride height, we'll have no problems. There we go, three out of four ain't bad. I'll get the last one when I can rotate the drive shaft around when this thing's on the ground safely. All right, let's get these springs in before it gets dark. All right, once all your bolts are torqued down, we can go ahead and install our spring. I took this isolator off the old axle. It's not great, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and slap that on here and get this spring on. Might have to use my compressors since I didn't put them on before we put on the bolts. It's all good though. Wanted to make sure I got it in.
All right, guys, everything's buttoned up, looking nice. We've got the springs on. All we gotta do is clip in our little ABS sensors. That's gonna go right into these open clips up here. It's hard to see, it's getting dark. I know, I know. That's what happens when you're working after work. So, all right, brake lines. I mean, brake lines, <laughs> silly. We'll just undo this. You know what? Let's time lapse it because everybody's seen clips and calipers before. So I'll get the rotors and I'll button this up, drop it down, and call it a wrap. Alright guys, we did it. Mission accomplished. We got the old smashed black booty commander rolling again. This is going to be my my rolling, running and driving parts car. I'm not going to put it back on the road because I don't feel like fixing this. Oh, sorry, sun glare. Uh, just a little bit too much body work for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got the Gator commander for a great score, great price. And all I really needed to do was get some lower control arms and that rear axle. So yeah, again, mission accomplished. We got ourselves a rolling parts car. Uh, as you can see, I'm starting to take out the interior now. We gotta do an interior swap because I want my beautiful black seats in, uh, in Gator and not those khaki ones. So let's uh, drive this thing to the storage unit. All right, to the storage unit. A nice Hemi 5.7 engine with 112,000 miles. Not bad for a 2010. I started the deconstruction process, so bear with me. Come on, come on. <laughs> Here we go. Couple check engine lights, no biggie. All right, let's get her gone. All right, time to say goodbye to the Black Booty Commander. I love this Jeep. This thing was an awesome vehicle. I flew up to Rochester with my wife, drove this home back to Long Island, had a great time in it, kept my family safe, and time to say goodbye. Next time you see this vehicle, it's gonna be in the form of parts as I fix up Gator, the Pimp Edition Commander. So, all right guys, uh, till we meet again. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next project.